Hello, uh, thanks for joining uh, Noir and I for um, the first of my 7th Gen Collection Voodoo videos. Um, in this one I want to cover Sega published games on the Nintendo Wii. Uh, the Nintendo Wii is, is a really interesting case in 7th Gen too, I think, because um, you know it's, it's a system I kind of just uh, disregarded. Um, I thought of it as a gimmicky system with a lot of shovelware. You know, interestingly though, the, the hardware was really uh, successful so uh, publishers actually uh, put a lot of interesting games on it so there's really quite a lot of uh, you know things to discover so hopefully you'll discover you know maybe a couple games that you guys uh, didn't know about maybe weren't on your radars you know I, I have uh, definitely at least one thing that I think is uh, particularly uh, could be quite collectible so um, before I get into that though I do want to just do a quick shameless plug for my online store I'm selling on eBay uh, under Play On Go. Um, I'll have a link to that down in the description if you want to check that out. Um, I'd really recommend, you know, especially uh, you know, as you're watching these videos, um, you know, if you're looking for some of the games that I cover, um, these are the kinds of things that I'm trying to uh, carry and keep in stock in my store. Uh, as opposed to when you're just getting these uh, out in the wild, you know, I feel like I'm able to add some value uh, due to the fact that I do carry a range of replacement cases cases that uh, I source um, you know mostly entirely from the original manufacturers and uh, what that means is that if I have any games where the cases are, have stickers on them or are or, or scuffed up um, I can replace those with a you know uh, nearly identical or completely identical case you know you're always going to be getting a like a like new uh, case on these games that you buy from me and I also have a professional resurfacer so uh, I can you know if there are any scratches on the discs I can take those out so you know that whenever you purchase from me not only are you going to be getting a like new box you're going to be getting a like new disc so um, you know you, you really can uh, can buy with confidence I hope that you'll uh, consider checking out the online store uh, that said let's go ahead and get into this uh, I'm going to do this basically alphabetical and uh, I have, you know, games to show off, and ones that I don't have, I'll go ahead and put an image up for you. So uh, we have to start with Alien Syndrome. Now, uh, this is something I've noticed with uh, 7th Gen, that there are a handful of these, like, remakes of classic arcade games, which I think is pretty cool. You know, I've been a gamer for a really long time, I like arcade games. This, I have no idea uh, how the quality of this is, I haven't played this. Um, but it's something, you know, that I don't see all the time. It, I wouldn't say that it's, you know, really, really hard to find, but it's certainly not a, a common game that I see around uh, a lot. And it's, uh, you know, not tremendously expensive right now. Um, you know, as with most of these, now is, uh, is the perfect time to, uh, to be going after this stuff. Um, next up we have uh, Shonen Jump uh, presents Bleach Shattered Blade. Um, you know, I can go ahead and uh, zoom in maybe just a little bit more. So, um, you know, you guys know that I'm an anime fan, and, uh, you know, Bleach is, is pretty good. Um, the first season was great. I think it's a little bit of a victim of its own success, uh, unfortunately. You know, just, it's dragged on for years now, and I just, I haven't really been following it. But, um, you know, this, uh, I believe, is a, a versus fighter. Uh, again, I don't know a whole lot about these. Um, I haven't played this one, but um, this is something that, you know, I see around, uh, it's fairly common, honestly, um, but it does have a, like a foil cover, like foil box art, and I find for some reason they tend to have a lot of trouble of like just slipping out of the bottom of the, um, the box and, and just getting like worn along the edge, so um, yeah, you know, this uh, this is something that, um, you know, you're going to want to try to find uh, in the in the best quality. It might not always be uh, as easy to find in the quality that you're looking for. Uh, next up, we have the Conduit. Now, this is interesting. Uh, it's a first-person shooter, uh, basically. It's obviously a sci science fiction shooter, and uh, I've played this. It's actually pretty fun. Um, it unfortunately like this one works with like the Wiimote uh, and the nunchuck and for some reason it was basically giving me motion sickness so um, you know that's that's kind of a, um, a, a bummer but an interesting thing about this is it does have a special edition so you're really going to want to be looking out for um, you know probably both editions of this this is really common the special edition is less common I don't actually have a copy of the special edition of the conduit um, 
but uh, that is that is something to keep an eye out for. Um, in addition, uh, there's a sequel to this which I don't have, and that's called uh, just Conduit Two. That is a is I would definitely say less common, and um, it's going to go for uh, you know a little more money, probably at least double um, the average price of the Wii games currently. And uh, it also has a special edition. Um, from what I read, the special edition was a GameStop exclusive. And uh, it says special edition, I believe, right on the cover, so it should be really obvious. Um, yeah, apparently, the, yeah, it had some like digital goods, but it came with a, uh, an art book. Now, I don't know if that was something that um, was separate or, you know, just sort of slips right in the, in the case, because I don't, I don't have a copy of it, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, from a collection standpoint, um, you know, looking for the uh, regular edition and the special edition of Conduit 2, I have a feeling that those in particular are going to be a little more collectible. Uh, they're already a little bit sought after. Um, you know, Conduit 2 also works with the uh, standard controller, which I think is a big plus for this kind of game. Um, and considering that the first game, like, was pretty decent, the second one seems, uh, it seems, seems pretty cool. So uh, you might want to keep an eye out for those. Um, now, something that, that the Wii is, uh, you know, surprisingly great for is, uh, is light gun shooters. Uh, I know that not everybody has the luxury of having, uh, you know, a stand-up, um, uh, CRT arcade cab that they can use to play, um, old, old-style light gun games, uh, like I do. And, um, the next best thing, you know, especially if you want to be playing these on a, an HD TV, is going to be, um, using either the, the Wii or, like, something like the, the Move. Uh, on the PlayStation 3 to play these light gun games. So um, uh, other YouTubers have talked about this game before, Ghost Squad. Um, it's just seems like a really you know sort of fun, cheesy um, time crisis style of um, of light gun shooter. And um, this this is you know uh, pretty common uh, right now still. Uh, it's not expensive, so I definitely recommend grabbing a copy of this. It's a, it's a pretty cool game. Uh, another light gun shooter that is uh, definitely less common, um, this is also something that I hear YouTubers uh, talk about, um, this is Gunblade New York and LA Machine Guns, um, this is an arcade hits pack, it's basically got these two arcade uh, cabs here um, emulated on this one um, disc, and uh, it's, it's fun, I ended up picking this up. Uh, a number of years ago when it was uh, much more common. Um, it still isn't really a common game, but I would see it around. I haven't seen it around for um, for several years. Definitely, you know, if I can get my hands on a copy of it, I will, um, you know, I'll definitely, uh, you know, make these available uh, for sale and keep you guys uh, posted about that. But uh, definitely I would say if you, you know, if you find this one, definitely grab it. More uh, light gun shooters here. We have uh, House of the Dead, two and three return. Now, um, I did want to mention all of the games um, that I've talked about so far are Wii exclusives. So uh, that's another thing to consider when you're, um, you know, collecting for these systems. Um, this one is, uh, it, it's a Wii exclusive in its compilation form like this, uh, but you can get the game separately. For instance, House of the Dead 2 on the Dreamcast. Um, House of the Dead 3, I believe, is available on the PlayStation 3. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you know, another uh, fun light gun shooter game here. Uh, this is relatively common. Um, I, you know, you, you can run across this still. Um, it's not very hard to find. And, um, you know, the House of the Dead games, uh, I mean, they're honestly not, like, my favorite light gun shooters, but they're totally fun. Uh, it's, it's a really cool series. So I can't really go wrong with that. I'm making a cut here because I forgot to mention one game, House of the Dead Overkill, another game in the House of the Dead series. There is a version of this called the Extended Cut, available on PlayStation 3 as well. Uh, next up we have Mad World. Now, um, this, this is funny because um, this has uh, been pretty common to find for quite a while. And um, honestly, I had uh, multiple copies of this available in my online store, and they they were just sort of kicking around, not selling for months, and then all of a sudden they sold out all at the same time. And I don't know if that's just because um, you know sort of the the price curve caught up with the you know what I was charging for them, but I have a feeling that it's it's possible that some sort of big YouTuber did a let's play of it uh, at the time and. Um, 
and people just, you know, ran out and bought it. So I, I don't know really exactly what that was, but ever since then, um, this is much less common to find. So, um... You know, another really interesting title, this is uh, developed by Platinum Games. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's kind of a double-edged sword. It seems to be pretty divisive um, in terms of, you know, I think a lot of people that are big Platinum fans aren't big fans of this game. Um, but it's it's very unique. It has a great art style. Uh, it's all this black and white um, with just, like, red blood is sort of basically the only color that you'll see. And uh, it seems like a really great um, piece to have in any Wii collection. Samba de Amigo. Um, this I would uh, almost um, sort of talk about in the same breath here as um, Sega Bass Fishing. And uh, I realized actually I missed a whole bunch of um, games that I don't have, so I'm going to come back to those uh, after we talk about these. But, um, you know, uh, ever since the Dreamcast, um, there are games that come out on other systems that I think of as like Dreamcast 2. You know, they're sort of successors to um, to the Dreamcast, and th these are two great examples. Uh, I haven't really played these, so I don't know if they're direct ports of the Dreamcast uh, games, but definitely, um, you know, they're continuing on with the spirit of the, the Dreamcast here. Neither of these are uh, are uncommon at all. They're, these are both common games. Um, they're not expensive. Um, so, you know, if you're interested in, in uh, Sega-published games, and especially, like, uh, I mean, I'm, these are, like, classic Sega. Yeah, I think these are Sega developed games and um, you know kind of ca capturing that Dreamcast spirit you definitely can't go wrong um, with Sega Bass Fishing and Samba de Amigo. I think they're good fits on the Wii. So some games that I don't have that I missed here in the M's um, the, uh, there's a, a series of Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. There's actually three games in this series. The first one of course just being Mario and Sonic at the, Olymp at the Olympic Games but um, the next one is Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Winter Games and Mario and Sonic at the London 2012 Olympic Games. Now, uh, it may just be that, um, you know, the, the later releases are newer, but they, they kind of go up a little bit in, uh, in value for uh, each successive uh, game. And I, I really um, would focus a spotlight on Mario and Sonic at the Olympic 2012 or the London 2012 Olympic Games because um, it comes with a special case. It's a yellow colored case. So this is not the kind of thing that um, you know you'd be able to buy a replacement case for from my store. So you know you're really going to be um, trying to find that game in the best possible condition. Um, you know with the yellow case that it comes with. So um, yeah, I think you know that alone is going to make this a little more uh, sought after, and um, you know probably keep the price up a little bit. Uh, it is uh, a bit more expensive, uh, maybe like another half again or, or twice as much as uh, what maybe the average uh, Wii game would go for. Um, so, you know, those are some games that I want to be uh, on the lookout for uh, myself. I just have not uh, put those in, in my collection yet. Uh, another one is Night's Journey of Dreams. Um, people have talked about this quite a bit, I think. I'd be surprised if you hadn't, you know, heard that there was a Knights game on the Wii. Um, I honestly don't know if, like, what Yuji Naka's involvement may have been with the game. Um, I did actually own it at one point, and I got rid of it. Uh, mostly because I just wasn't a big fan of the narrative, and it, you know, it seemed kind of kitty and just sort of the way that it, um, it worked into, uh, like introducing you to the gameplay, it just it wasn't very compelling to me. And once I got to the gameplay, it, it felt sort of simplistic, um, it, just you know compared to the um, sort of the more immediate fun of the previous uh, night, Knights games. So um, that's probably something that I'd like to get back into my collection. Um, it is a little harder to find these days, so um, I'm going to be keeping my eyes open for that. But yeah, next up, um, another thing. This is uh, something that I would say could conceivably be. Uh, rather collectible. Whether it's going to be sought after uh, or very expensive at any point, I don't know. But um, it looks to me, based on the research that I've done, and there isn't a lot of information um, out there, but that there was something called a, the Sega Fun Pack, where it was basically just a bundle of two uh, Sega published games. And uh, the one for the Wii is Sonic and the Secret Rings and Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz. Um, 
like I said, information is scarce. Uh, it looks like these were released in North America, um, but you know maybe it's possible that these are these are something from another region, and I, my information is just not good. Um, but you know if anybody has information on on these uh, Sega Fun Packs, uh, I would really appreciate it. It does look like they came in a box. Um, and I, you know, that it seems like the kind of thing that um, I, I think would be uh, would be collectible uh, without a doubt. Next up, uh, something that I do have here is uh, Sega Superstars Tennis. Um, this is a game that was actually released on uh, multiple systems. Uh, it's available on the uh, the PS2, actually the PlayStation 3, and the 360. So, um, you know, and something to keep in mind with things like this is uh, I, just as a game player, am going to be tempted to go after what I feel is the definitive version of a game, and uh, basically ignore what I look at as like the 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 lesser versions of a game. Um, but from a collection standpoint, uh, you know, maybe the reverse w would be better to, uh, to keep in mind um, because, you know, I don't know how many people went for Sega Superstars Tennis, um, you know, maybe to use with the motion controls on the Wii uh, versus maybe to go for possibly better graphics uh, or a more traditional control scheme on the Xbox 360 or the, the PlayStation 3. Um, so, you know, even with games when there's multiple versions, uh, depending on how you want to collect for seventh gen systems um, you know you you may want to go for all three versions especially if the game is affordable like Sega uh, Superstars Tennis is. But, uh, one that I do have here is Sonic and the Secret Rings um, there is also uh, Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing um, now Sonic and the Secret Rings is a Wii exclusive uh, Sonic and Sega All-Star Racing is not. That is available on the PlayStation 3 and the 360. And when I talk about console exclusivity, uh, I'm, I'm omitting uh, handhelds. One more on my list that I missed in the heat of the moment is Sonic and the Black Knight. Another game that I do not have yet, but uh, this isn't particularly uncommon, nor uh, is it expensive. But yeah, so uh, let's see, Sonic uh, Colors is another one. And uh, this one I have played some of. That is... Um, there's some good buzz about this. You guys have probably heard about this. Uh, this is generally it seems like considered uh, one of the better of the modern Sonic games, and I would I would agree with that in terms of um, what I've played of it anyway. It does seem pretty cool. Uh, it sort of um, has like 3D. Uh, sort of like third-person perspective uh, from behind Sonic, and then you also get like the the sort of more 2D like side uh, view perspective um, that it'll kind of switch back and forth between, which I think is cool and it's it's pretty fun um, what I played of it. Uh, this one I would say is getting uh, maybe a little harder to find, and it's also um, you know it's a little more sought after because people consider it a decent game. So that you know this one in particular, I would say um, yeah I could I would expect it to at least retain um, some value or maybe go up as time goes by. Um, Additionally, there's uh, there's Sonic Riders Zero Gravity. Uh, that is not a game that I have. It's also available on the PlayStation 2. Um, and Sonic Unleashed, that is uh, also available on the PlayStation 2 and the PlayStation 3 and the 360. Now, um, next up we have a couple of Super Monkey Ball games. Now, um, Super Monkey Ball, I actually don't know if I know where... Um, these originated. I almost feel like it might have been on the GameCube that these uh, really sort of first made their debut. Um, again, it's sort of the kind of thing I almost think of as, you know, this would have been on the Dreamcast had, you know, had things gone a little differently. And um, GameSack did an episode where they talked about these. I actually forget which one it was that they were advocating more than the other, but really neither of these are um, you know, very uncommon or expensive right now, so I would say if you're interested in them, just pick them both up. Um, the Step and Roll, uh, I believe, uh, is compatible with the um, the Wii Balance Board, so that is a, an interesting uh, control scheme option for that one. Um, and this one just works with the regular uh, Wii mode. Uh, I haven't played them, but I did play some of the one on the, the Vita, and um, you know, they seem like pretty pretty fun games, so I don't think you can really go wrong with those. And um, Here's something that um, that 
was a little hard for me to find, um, Tournament of Legends. Now, it has a really cheesy, um, generic sounding uh, title here. It reminds me of like League of Legends or something. Uh, I wasn't really sure what to expect of this, but it looks like uh, it's basically a 3D fighter. Um, I haven't played it. Um, I would like to check it out. Uh, it does work with the, um, the classic controller. And uh, from what I've heard, it is a little bit of a unique um, fighting game system. So, you know, think of it as something a little more experimental from, you know, kind of like the days of um, the early Tekken and like Soul Blade and when, you know, people were still just sort of, uh, you know, trying out new things with, uh, with 3D fighters, the Virtua Fighter series and stuff like that. Um, you know, this one it is, seems like it's kind of a unique um, 3D, 3D fighter on the Wii. And, um, you know, I definitely uh, would keep an eye out for this. Like I said, it's uh, once I found out about it, um, I, I had seen it before and I'd passed up on it. Um, then when I tried to find it, it was, it was a little, little tough to track down a copy. Um, you know, I've seen a couple uh, copies of this around, but um, it's definitely, I would say, it's a little uncommon, at least out in the wild. Um, and finally, two games that I don't have. We have uh, Virtua Tennis 2009. Um, that is not a console exclusive. It is available on the PlayStation 3 and the 360. And uh, Virtua Tennis 4, which is also not a console exclusive, it's available on PlayStation 3 and 360 as well. Um, you know, those I think are going to be relatively common and not all that expensive. Um, but I haven't um, added them to my collection yet. And honestly, um, I would say I've probably seen Virtua Tennis 4 more than I've seen Virtua Tennis 2009. But, um, but yeah, uh, I don't think that those are you know particularly expensive games. Um, now is probably a great time to go after those. So um, you know, I uh, hope that this has been helpful. Uh, definitely let me know, um, you know if you guys uh, enjoy this, if you like the format. Um, I would definitely like to do a lot more of these uh, and go over um, probably by publisher because I think that's a really interesting way to get a um, you know a kind of a perspective on. Um, you know, what was really happening on these systems and, um, you know, how these various publishers have, um, have approached them. So anyway, um, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you'll join me again for more video game and anime related videos. Take care.